A very warm welcome to the twelfth lecture on the subject of wavelets and multirate digital signal processing. Let us spend a minute on what we had done in the previous lecture. We had looked at the two band filter bank in the previous lecture and we had written down a set of conditions based on what happens when you go past a down sampler and an up sampler in the z domain. So, let us put down the conditions once again or let us in effect put down the relation between the input and the output in the z domain, where it is valid to use the z domain, which is true in many circumstances. So, let us summarize what we had derived the last time. We said to a two channel filter bank, input x n it is z transform. Now, I will use this script z to denote the z transform capital X z output y n with z transform capital Y z. Now, incidentally we suppress the regions of convergence. So, we do not explicitly mention the regions of convergence. Analysis side H 0 z the so called low pass filter and H 1 z the high pass filter synthesis side G 0 z low pass filter, G 1 z high pass filter. So, this is the circumstance of course, you know where the down samplers and up samplers are. The relation between y z and x z is as follows. We have y z is tau 0 z x z plus tau 1 z x of minus z. And recall that we had called this the Elias term and therefore, tau 1 z was called the Elias system function. I put system function in inverted commas. I must emphasize here, you know when there is an Elias term, the word system function is actually a misnomer. One should not use the term system function, because the system is not linear and shift invariant. On the other hand, if tau 1 z is 0, the system becomes linear and shift invariant. So, this is something that we must now take note of. Tau 1 z equal to 0 is essentially what is called the condition for Elias cancellation. And we note the system becomes linear and shift invariant.
Now, we had looked at one possibility under which tau 1 z could be 0 and we had said the most general possibility can be accommodated by what is called a cancelling term R z. Let us put that down again. We said tau 1 z is essentially the function or the expression half g 0 z h 0 minus z plus g 1 z h 1 minus z. And tau 1 z equal to 0 means essentially that g 0 z by g 1 z must be minus h 1 of minus z divided by h 0 of minus z. And the simple case is equate the numerator and denominator. So, equate if you equate the numerator you get g 0 z is plus minus h 1 minus z and g 1 z is correspondingly minus or respectively plus h 0 minus z. We had also interpreted these expressions in the ideal case. If h 0 z for example, was the ideal low pass filter, then this would become an ideal high pass filter as we expect and if h 1 is the ideal high pass filter, this would become the ideal low pass filter all with a cutoff of pi by 2. So, in that sense we have a neat interpretation for the ideal case even if the filter is not ideal, we have a reasonable interpretation in the sense that we could always take this to be a non ideal low pass filter with a cutoff of pi by 2 and this would again become a reasonably close filter high pass with cutoff pi by 2 and vice versa for this. If this is a high pass filter with cutoff pi by 2, then this becomes a reasonable low pass filter with cutoff pi by 2 whatever it be. Let us now of course, consider the second condition. You see this is Elias cancellation. With Elias cancellation, we are assuming that there is linear linearity and shift in variance in the system. There is a linear shift in variance system there. What is the system function then? If tau 1 z is equal to 0, then you have y z is equal to tau 0 z x z and we are saying effectively that tau 0 z is the system function in the true sense. So, this is an LSI system with system function tau 0 z. Now, you see one of the things that one needs to worry about is what should tau 0 z be? Tau 0 z is also modifying experience for the input and ultimately we want decomposition and reconstruction. So, in reconstruction we want x z to be almost the same as y, y z if not quite if not identical at least there must be tolerable changes. What are these tolerable changes that we can allow? or more, more appropriately what can we and what should we tolerate here that is what we need to think about what can we and what should we tolerate. Well, if we are talking about time systems then we have to tolerate a delay. First let me explain this intuitively and then let me put it down mathematically the filter does some processing. It takes some time to process at the analysis side and at the synthesis side. Now, you need finite time to process at the analysis side, you need finite time to reconstruct at the synthesis side. So, if you want no other change between the input and the output, at least you have to accept the change 
of a delay to allow for some time to process. So, if we do not want any other change at least we should allow for a term of the form z to the power minus d in tau naught z. The other thing that we do not mind allowing is an overall multiplicative constant. After all, we do not mind if the whole input sequence is multiplied by some constant c, because we can always multiply by 1 by c at the output, it is a simple operation to do, a simple amplifier or attenuator that is not very difficult to do. So, we do not mind if the whole LSI system that we have here after Elias cancellation multiplies by a constant and delays by d and that is exactly what we shall now put down mathematically. So, we are saying in a perfect reconstruction system we allow, we should say we allow tau 0 z to be of the form some constant times z raised to the power minus d is a constant. Ideally, we would have liked tau 0 z equal to 1 for all z, essentially an identity system. Now, that would as I explained before make the system non causal. So, this allowance of z raised to the power minus d, of course, d is positive here, is allowed because of causality. Now, we will take the example again as I said of the Haar MRA and the filter bank corresponding to the Haar MRA. Once again we will see if we understand the Haar case, we understand a lot of things at once. So, let us put down the filters for the Haar case. So, in the Haar case we had the following filter. analysis. So, this is H 0 and this is H 1. Synthesis. You know remember on the synthesis side at that time we had said we will allow for a plus minus ambiguity here. Let us keep that ambiguity and you will see why that ambiguity is needed. This is G 0 and this is G 1. Let us write down tau 1 z here. Tau 1 z by definition is of course, g 0 z h 0 minus z plus 
g1 z h1 minus z and with our definitions of g0 h0 g1 and h1 we have the right hand side becoming simply half g0 is 1 plus z inverse h0 minus z is 1 minus z inverse by 2. Now, here we have a plus minus ambiguity g 1 z is of course, 1 minus z inverse and h 1 minus z is 1 plus z inverse by 2. Now, you know when you look at this carefully, you notice why we want this ambiguity there. We want this to become 0. And therefore, it is obvious that the minus sign should be chosen, the plus sign will not give us a 0. So, for Elias cancellation, it is very clear that g 1 z must be equal to minus 1 minus z inverse and not plus. So, therefore, now let us freeze our g 0, g 1, h 0 and h 1 for the hard case. And now, let us verify the perfect reconstruction condition or verify tau 0 z. Indeed, tau 0 z is obviously g 0 z h 0 z plus g 1 z h 1 z and when we expand this we get 1 plus z inverse the whole squared by 2 minus 1 minus z inverse the whole squared by 2. and this is easy to evaluate potentially gives us half into half and we can use the a plus b into a minus b kind of expression and we have 1 by 4 a plus b is 1 plus z inverse plus 1 minus z inverse and a minus b is 1 plus z inverse minus 1 plus z inverse. So, 2 z inverse and here of course, the z inverse cancels and here we have z inverse surviving and all in all this is equal to 1. simple and elegant. In fact, it is 1, but with a factor of z inverse. So, c 0 is equal to 1 and you have a z inverse there. So,
the tau 0 z all in all is z inverse. What does this mean? Essentially, only a delay of one sample the constants have already been accommodated. So, c 0 becomes 1. Now, why was this delay required? As I said, this delay is required on account of causality. If we did not want this delay to be there, we would need non causality either on the analysis or on the synthesis side. So, for example, if I do not want this z inverse term, I must multiply the output by z. In other words, I must shift the output backward by one sum. That means, g 0 and g 1 would now become non causal filters. Wherever causality is not an issue. So, for example, suppose we are dealing with spatial data, then this is not a problem. We can get tau 0 z exactly equal to 1 without the z inverse term, but where causality is an issue as it is when you are dealing with time data, then we cannot do this. Now, in fact, in this case, let us also dissect the situation and understand it a little better. Let us put down the condition that we had written for alias cancellation in the specific and simplest case and see if it holds here. So, indeed, we had said we had suggested that the simplest possibility of alias cancellation is when g 0 z is either plus or minus h 1 of minus z. And in the Haar case, we have h 1 z is essentially half 1 plus or 1 minus z inverse rather and therefore, h 1 of minus z would be half 1 plus z inverse. So, you will notice that g 0 z is indeed plus h 1 of minus z, but without this factor of half. Now, you know that factor of half is not an issue at all. You remember that more generally we had written down the following requirements. We had said that more generally for Elias cancellation, we need g 0 z to be plus or minus some r z times h 1 minus z and g 1 z to be correspondingly minus or plus r z times h 0 minus z. And in particular, you could choose r z to be a constant. So, in particular, For the Haar case, we have chosen R z to be equal to 2, a constant. And in fact, I can also check for the second expression g 1 z in the Haar case should then be minus h 0 of minus z or rather with a factor of 2. So, 2 times and indeed minus 2 times h 0 minus z is minus 2 times half into 1 minus z inverse which is correct. So, things have all fallen into place. It is convenient. I once again point out 
how beautifully one can understand several concepts at once, when one takes the specific example of the har. The har MRA embeds in it several concepts explained in a simple way. But of course, we cannot be content with the har and we shall slowly understand why. The first step in understanding this is to understand where the har is the baby and where we need to grow further. Why is the har just the beginning of a family of multi resolution analysis? In what sense is it the simplest case? Towards that objective, let us look at that low pass filter and that high pass filter from a slightly different perspective. What does it do to a certain class of sequences? Let us see that. So, let us put the following question. What does the HAR do to constant sequences? In other words, consider x n equal to some constant, say c 1 for all n, the extreme case. How would the outputs of the various points in the Haar filter bank look? So, it is very easy to see that if you take the Haar MRA, I would not keep writing the filters again, I will just show them symbolically. I have h 0 here, I have h 1 there and if I take just the analysis side, it is very easy to verify that the output here is going to be the 0 sequence. In fact, I will take just a minute and verify it. Essentially, H 1 z operates 1 minus z inverse. And this essentially means the operation x n minus x n minus 1 by 2, which is identically 0 for all n. So, this is a very significant observation we are making. We are saying on the Haar filter bank, if there is any constant component in the input, it is destroyed on the high pass branch. This is a slightly different way of looking at the Haar filter bank. In fact, now we will go one step further. In the Haar filter bank, I had one term of the form 1 minus z inverse. Suppose I had two such terms, what would happen? So, let us put that down. So, we will consider a cascade of 1 minus z inverse term. So, you know you have a system like this 1 minus z inverse fed into 1 minus z inverse and so on. We shall now prove a very simple and a very elegant result. We shall show that every cascaded, every instance of 1 minus z inverse in the cascade reduces a polynomial sequence to 1 degree lower. So, 
So, you know I am looking at the situation from a slightly different perspective. Now, I am not talking about frequencies or sinusoids anymore. I am saying suppose you think of an input sequence as having polynomial components. Now, where on earth do you encounter a polynomial kind of expansion? Well, we know about the Taylor series. After all, the Taylor series is essentially a polynomial expansion of an input. And when we make a polynomial expansion of the input and we subject a few terms in this polynomial expansion to the action of 1 minus their inverse, we have an interpretation that we are talking about here. So, you know visualize a region in which you are talking about the sequence being and you know. So, let the sequence for example, come from an analytic continuous function and let then that function be expanded in a Taylor series around a certain point, which means you have polynomial terms. Now, let those polynomial terms be subjected to the action of this cascade of 1 minus z inverse. That is the situation in which we should visualize our sets. It is a different way of expanding an input. Anyway, so putting that context in perspective, coming back to the polynomial. So, we will show that if I feed any polynomial of the form say a 0 n to the power of capital M plus a 1 n to the power m minus 1 and so on up to a m which is a polynomial input sequence. Every time we subject this polynomial to 1, 1 minus z inverse, what is going to happen? So, let us subject it to 1. The first time we subject it, we are doing this. Now, what is happening in this process? It is very clear that when we expand this, the coefficient of n to the power of m is easy to evaluate. It is essentially a 0, I mean you know you know have the term a 0 n raised to the power of m coming from here and the term a 0 n minus 1 to the power of m which contributes the coefficient of n raised to the power of m here and that coefficient is again a 0. So, a 0 minus a 0 which is 0. So, that is interesting each time we subject this polynomial sequence to the action of 1 minus z inverse, we are reducing the degree of the polynomial by 1. In fact, let me illustrate this by taking a, se a sequence which is polynomial of degree 1 and let us subject it to the action of this filter. So, you have essentially something like say let us take a concrete example. So, let us take 3 times n plus 5 and let us subject it to the action of 1 minus z inverse to fix our ideas. What emerges here is essentially 3 n plus 5 minus 3 n minus 1 plus 5. 
and that is easy to evaluate. It is essentially 3 n plus 5 minus 3 n plus 3 minus 5 and that is just 3 for all n. So, you brought the degree of the polynomial down by 1. You had a degree 1 polynomial, now you have a degree 0 polynomial. That is exactly what happens for any degree polynomial. So, what we just showed a minute ago and I will put back that discussion is that the coefficient of the highest power n to the power m vanishes and therefore, when this sequence goes into z raised to the power minus 1 minus 1 or 1 minus z inverse so to speak, you only have n raised to the power m minus 1 and lower degree terms left. So, now we have just proved a simple lemma each instance of 1 minus z inverse brings the polynomial degree down by 1. So, in other words in a certain sense the more 1 minus z inverse terms you have and by the way we will soon see these terms are going to be on the high pass branch not on the low pass branch. You know 1 minus z inverse when we substitute z equal to e raise the power of j omega vanishes at omega equal to 0. Let us verify that. So, when we take 1 minus z inverse and substitute z equal to e raise the power j omega, we get 1 minus e raise the power j omega and when we put omega equal to 0, we get this is equal to 0. So, in other words this is 0 d c so to speak. 0 at 0 frequency, 0 response at 0 frequency. This cannot possibly be low pass in its behavior. So, it must be high pass. In other words, if you do want terms of this kind 1 minus z inverse, they must only be present in the high pass filter. They cannot be terms present in the low pass filter otherwise you know you would have a 0 response at 0 frequency ridiculous for a low pass filter. In fact, what we are now going to build up is a whole family of multi resolution analysis in which you have more and more 1 minus z inverse terms in the high pass branch and that is in fact, very well known as what is called the Dobash family in multi resolution analysis. So, let us write that down. We now intend to build what is called the Dobash family. You know this name is actually the name of a mathematician, scientist, whatever you might want to call her and the full name is this. I believe this is correctly pronounced as Dobash, but I could be wrong. I think we could just probably say Dobashis and be content. So, anyway we now intend to build the Dobash filter bank. So, Dobash MRAs and the feature of these Dobash MRAs is that as we go to senior members of the family, as we go to increasing seniority. There are more and more 1 minus z inverse terms. 
So, on the high pass branch we are effectively cancelling or killing higher and higher order polynomials. So, the other way of looking at it is if you are cancelling or killing them on the high pass branch they must go to the low pass branch. So, we are retaining more smoothness on the low pass branch that is another way of looking at it. And in addition to doing this we also want the same kind of analysis and synthesis filters. So, all this together leads us to a special class of filter banks which we shall now put down explicitly and these filter banks are called conjugate quadrature filter banks. So, we are looking at one class of what are called conjugate quadrature filter banks. Now, the describing equations of these conjugate quadrature filter banks are very simple. We start from the Elias cancellation condition. The Elias cancellation condition says G 0 z needs to be essentially H 1 of minus z. and we have the freedom to put plus or minus here. Similarly, g 1 z needs to be correspondingly minus or plus h 0 minus z. Now, taking inspiration from the har, let us take the following choice. g 1 z is minus h 0 minus z and therefore, g 0 z is then plus h 1 of minus z. Now, you know we will keep away the factor of 2 for the moment because after all that factor can be absorbed in the c 0 that we have allowed. So, with this substitution what do we get? The tau 0 z then of course, tau 1 z is identically 0 by construction, but tau 0 z takes the following form then. Tau 0 z takes the form half g 0 z which is essentially h 1 minus z times h 0 z plus minus h 0 minus z times h 1 z. So, we have an interesting situation here. We have this h 0 z h 1 minus z product you know h 1 z is essentially a high pass filter, h 1 minus z therefore, essentially becomes or aspires to become a low pass filter with a cutoff of pi by 2. So, here you essentially have a cascade of two low pass filters with cutoff pi by 2 and correspondingly this becomes a cascade of high pass filters with cutoff pi by 2 and you are effectively saying that the overall system function with this cascade of low pass filters of cut off pi by 2 and this pair of high pass filters with cut off pi by 2 must go towards a perfect reconstruction situation. That is the interpretation of this equation here. So, we now focus on h 1 z. You see, if we look at the har, once again, 
there is a relation between h 0 and h 1. In fact, what we are trying to say is we of course, need to relate the synthesis to the analysis for the purpose of alias cancellation, but now we have a perfect reconstruction requirement. So, we want this tau 0 z to essentially go to a delay and a multiplying constant. Now, that means you need a relation between h 1 and h 0 and one simple thing to do is to make h 0 z related to h 1 minus z. That is what we have actually done in the Haar. If you look at it carefully, in the Haar case, h 1 minus z is essentially 1 plus z inverse by 2. So, you know h 1 minus z and h 0 z are very closely related. Now, let us generalize this. In fact, the only catch is you know we will later on need to make a little adjustment here. So, at this moment even if we simply accept h 1 minus z to be equal to you see in the hard case this is equal to h 0 z but we may need to make a little adjustment here. So, what we will do is we shall in general note that h 1 or rather uh, h 0 should be related to h 1 minus z. So, in the hard case they are equal, but in general we will ask for a relation a very close relationship. The other way of saying it is that if you replace z by minus z in h 0 you should get the h 1. So, what we are saying is choose h 1 to be derived from or to be slightly modified from h 0 of minus z. modified in what way. So, in fact, you know here again there is a little bit of an issue. What I am now going to do is to put down a choice for h 1 by knowledge or by an exposure to the filter banks that I have and justify it later. So, you will have to bear with me for a little while not too long maybe just about a lecture. I shall put down the choice here, I shall partially justify the choice in this lecture and completely justify the choice in the next lecture, where we once again look at the whole system in total. So, let us choose h 1 z not to be h 0 of minus z, but h 0 of minus z inverse. And we will also allow for the possibility of a z raise to the power d here. So, we will say minus d, we will allow for this possibility. If we do that, in fact, we can verify for the case of Haar. It is very easy. For the Haar case, let us take z inverse times h 0 of minus z inverse. And indeed, h 0 of minus z inverse for the Haar case 
is essentially 1 minus z by 2. And then if I take z inverse times h 0. So, if I multiply this by z inverse, multiply both sides by z inverse, I have essentially z inverse minus 1 by 2. So, we are doing well. Now, let us make this the most general case. So, we will consider h 1 z to be of this form z to the power minus t h 0 minus z inverse and write down the tau 0 z for this. tau 0 z would become half then h 0 z h 1 of minus z. So, h 1 of minus z becomes minus 1 raised to the power minus d times h 0 z inverse. Now, minus you see you have g 0. So, again now you have g 0 and let me put back the expression for you just for convenience. We want tau 0 z to be this h 1 minus z times h 0 z for which we have this term h 0 z into h 1 minus z all right. So, you have z raised to d there and minus h 0 minus z times h 1 z and h 1 z we have accepted to be z raised to the power minus d times h 0 minus z inverse. So, we have z raised to the power minus d here. Now, what we intend to do in the next lecture is essentially to look at this expression. So, we have h 0 z h 0 z inverse here h 0 minus z h 0 minus z inverse there the z raise the power minus d terms there and of course, you have a minus 1 raise the power minus d here and a minus 1 here we need to choose d strategically it is clear and then we also need to put some conditions on h 0. So, this indeed becomes a perfect reconstruction situation we shall complete this in the next lecture and take it further from there. Thank you.